Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Chris, and welcome to Linux Tech Geek. So about a week ago in stream, I was talking to a couple people, and I was talking about org mode in Emacs, and that got me thinking. I've been slowly transitioning all of my configuration files to org mode. And the reason I've been doing this is, number one, is because you can make the code and the documentation all in one file. Not only that, but when you upload this, th these configs to GitLab or to GitHub, um, GitHub and GitLab has a special way to show the README. So, really, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. But really, um, it, it's pretty cool. It's really neat what you can do with this mode and. So what I thought we would do today in this video is I want to show you guys how to make an org document from scratch. Now, in this video, I'm not going to cover every single feature in org mode. Um, number one, I just don't know a lot of key binds, um, but I do know enough to get started and to how to uh, start slowly transitioning all of your uh, documents to this org mode. So with all that being said, let's flip over to the desktop here and uh, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is um, we're going to make a custom org document, okay? Now, this is just for testing purposes. This is not, uh, the code will be real, but I'm not gonna upload this to, um, GitHub or GitLab or anything like that. Um, I'll show you guys some uh, some uh, actual configuration files that I've been working on, um, and that's actual real stuff. But um, for this demonstration purposes, I just want to make a custom C++ file, and um, I want to show you guys the real power behind this org mode. So with all that being said, let's. Get Emacs running here. Um, okay, so we got Emacs. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is, all right, is we're gonna create this org document. All right, so the way we do this is, I want to make sure I'm in my home directory. So let's make sure we're in home, and then um, we're gonna. We're going to name this how I typically would name a document that I'm going to upload to GitLab or GitHub is I would call it readme.org. The reason we use the word, the, the file name readme is because if you ever go to GitHub or GitLab, the first thing that you see on every project is the readme file, right? So this will make more sense when I actually show you um, on the uh, GitLab website what I'm talking about. But we're going to do readme, all caps, dot org. And it's going to open up this in a um, org document. Now, the title really doesn't matter, okay? What really, really matters, though, is we have to do a, what's called a property tag. Now, what's a property tag? Well, a property tag is going to tell em uh, org mode in Emacs what file that we're actually going to write to, right? So, we're going to do property, and then, did I still have... Yes, I do. So this is how you pretty much have to do it. Okay, you need property, and then you need header args, another colon, tangle, and then you need the file name that you're actually going to write to. Now, this is going to be a C++ document. So, of course, I am not going to write to just config, right? What I'm going to write to is test.cpp. Now, what this is going to do is 
when whenever we write to this whenever we write the source code it's going to take everything in that source code block and it's going to throw it in this test.c++ file all right so if i can type here so the way we start is we do a less than sign and we go type in src so begin source, and I don't know why it's not, it shouldn't do that, but now right here, we can tell it, um, we can tell it to write any, any type of code we want to, right? If it's a C++ document, you're going to say C++ here. If it's a Rust document, you would probably say RS or RUST. Um, if it was... If it was a normal configuration file, you would just say, huh. Um, if it's a, um, if it's a Python script, you would say PY, right? So we're doing C++, so I'm going to do CPP. Now, everything that I write inside these brackets, I mean, inside right here, um, so these pound signs, that's actually going to be the code that gets thrown into that test.c++ document. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to do include, and as you can see right now, we have um, we have colors turned on for uh, C++. So I'm going to do IO stream, and I'm just going to write a hello world program. Uh, Okay, and then I can do int main, and then we'll just do cl, hello world, and then we'll do return zero, right? Now, watch what happens. I just wrote it. It said tangling home chris readme.org. Now, it should, I, I'm pretty sure I have auto tangle turned on. If you do not have auto tangle turned on, which you do need to hit, is you need to hit meta X, which is the meta key in Emacs, is alt. So you do alt X, and then you need to type in org, babble, Tangle. And now it's going to say at the bottom there that it tangled zero lines of code because it auto tangled a minute ago. Now we can just do a vertical split. And now we should have that test.c file. And let's open that test.c file. And as you can see, none of the other stuff got generated. Check this out. This is another cool thing. Remember how I said that org mode is self-documentation. It, it, it's self-document. So what, what we could do right here is we could do, and you see DT, if you watch DT's videos on Emacs, he does this crap all the time. And it's, it's, it makes sense, right? We can do about, okay. Um, we'll just say, well, this is a C++ program to display hello world to the console, right? Now, let's close out this file, and I'll show you something. So, let's, let's do org babble tangle again. Which we don't need to. Um, auto tangle is on, so... Um, but I do want to demonstrate that for you guys. Now, let's open up that document again. So we can do space, period. Um, it's test.c++. So, you see that? None of the about stuff got written to this file. And the reason it does not get written to this file is because it's not in that source code block. So, do buffer i, 
yeah, Bapra. And then I had to think about that for a minute. Um, let's open up this readme.org file again. We can write all kinds of stuff, right? We can even write, um, we can even write comments. So we can do, I don't know, um, we can say, this is the main function. Um, okay, this is the main function. So um, we can also do another function. So just for testing, we ain't gonna run this code or anything, but we can do, um, I don't know, we can do int add. We'll do int x, int y, and then return. No, we need to do our source code thing first. So we're going to do begin source. Um, C plus plus. In source. And now we'll do um, int, int add. Int y, int x, okay, and then we'll just do return x plus y, or y plus x. I am so rusty on C++. Alright, this would actually run, but if we write this, now watch what happens. Base period. Test.c++. See that? It got written. But none of the comments got written, right? So you may be asking yourself, well, this is all good and everything, but what if we just want to open up test.c++ um, in Vim, make a quick correction or something like that, or... Um, you know, and I want to see some comments. Well, if that was the case, then what you would need to do is you would definitely need to um, you would need to put some comments in the actual source code blocks right here. Um, so we could do this by we can do uh, which is right at the end here. This is a uh, so we can say. This writes to the console. Um, we can say this returns x plus y. Um, we can say we can call this five and six. Actually, we can say add. Five six and L this writes out five plus six to the console. Um and then up here what we can do is we can say Well uh this is an add function. Right? But the only thing that's going to be written to this org document is everything in these source code blocks. And that's the main point I want to, I want to emphasize on this. Okay? Now, so let's write it again. It tangled. But for I, because I already have it open, test off C++. And as you can see, we do have our... Um, we do have our actual um, C++ comments, right? So, I hope you guys kind of get sort of an understanding of the reason this is so good. Now, I want to show you guys a couple more things. Um, let's do readme.org again. Now, we can even do table of contents, right? Um, and this is cool, too, because what if, what if, we wanted to say, um, and you see this a lot of times in configuration files. Um, 
I don't know. We'll say add. Add function, right? And then down here, we'll say. Uh, we'll say main. Main function, right? And then up here, we can say. Um, we can do. We can do table of contents. And then we can colon, POC, and I believe it's colon again. And then we write it. Boom. It automatically generates those, uh, those headers for us. Automatically. And what's cool is if you're in, if you're in Emacs, now a GitHub, I think, um, I don't know if, I don't think, GitHub, no, actually, GitHub supports this, but GitLab doesn't support this yet. Um, but if you're in Emacs, and let's pretend like you had a thousand line document, right? Like DT's Emacs config. We'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. But you can actually click on, you can click on these functions, or these, these uh, the table of contents stuff, and it'll take you directly to those headers. And that's super, that's super handy. Um, you can also, I think what's the tab key. Uh, is it tab? No, I'm screwing this up, ain't I? Not sure the key, but there is a key to, uh, to fold these, uh, these documents as well, or these these um, these headers. Um, not sure. You can even do headers um, inside of headers. So I can do. Oh, we can do another header. We can do. We can do two. We can do. Let's just say sub sub function. Don't matter, right? And look at that. It automatically wrote it for us. So you can do you can do all kinds of stuff. Now you can even do um, like you can see keybinds or whatever how they're set up. Uh, you can do charts, all kinds of neat stuff. I don't know how to do that type of stuff yet. I'm still still working on it. But um, yeah, I mean this is it's pretty basic, I know, but um, this is how you can start writing a document, um, a custom or document or whatever. Um, but I do want to show you guys some actual real configuration scripts and stuff so you kind of get a under, better understanding. Um, so let's do space. Um, and then we can do config. We'll look at my i3. So as you can see in my i3 config, I have the config. I also have i3 status. I don't use the i3 status. I can remove that anytime I wanted to. But we got that readme.org. So let's, let's open that up. So as you can see, I got some more stuff at the top here. So I have a better title. I have an author. Um, I got the description. I got that property tag. That property tag is the most important part of this whole entire document, though. And, and that's because without that property tag, you, it will not, the org babble tangle will not write to a uh, configuration file. So we got POC. And as you can see right here, this is not a C++ file. This is a custom configure, just a regular configuration file. I'm not sure what language um, i3 actually uses. I think it's their own language, but as you can see, um, it works just the same. The only difference is, is right here, you have to put conf, C-O-N-F, instead of an actual programming language. Okay, so I have, so I have some of this um, going. So we, we got the key binds, and then... Uh, I think that's pretty much all I got working on this 
a thing, but I could I could do I mean I could do a little bit more. Um so like right here we could say I don't know, I could say anything. Um but that's my I three. I'll show you I'll show you the Q tile. I think the Q tile one is a little bit better. Um so read me dot org. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. So this is the key this is the Qtile config. Now this is Matt's config plus kind of like my config cuz I edited a bunch of crap. Um and then I, of course I switched it over to um org mode here. Um but you can see I mean it's just it, it's super it's just super easy. Um I mean it is super super easy. And th the nicest thing, like, about it, like, if I wanted to go to scratch pads, then I just hit enter on scratch pads. And it takes me right there. Right? GG to the top. Okay? What if I want to look at monitors or main config? Okay. Hit enter. Go right there. Now... One of the cool things about this document, too, is that, so, we'll switch over to my GitLab here, and I'll show you guys what it looks like in GitLab. Now, to, remember how I said, how I said that you pretty much want to make it readme, all capitalized, .org. You don't have to do this, but if you are going to upload it to uh, GitLab or GitHub, um, it's a it makes sense to do that because that's the that's the file you know like when someone clicks on your um someone clicks on your project here right so let's say they click on my my qtile config right that readme.org it automatically gets gets a uh, it, it displays and what's even better is everything that you all the the configuration stuff like the the about stuff like all this stuff automatically gets displayed so you can see like right here these are the key binds yeah that is way off i need to fix that <laughs> that don't even make sense these are the key binds or qtile to launch application yeah that don't make sense but um I, I can I can put anything right here if I wanted to, right? And you can see how it kind of breaks it up too. Um, and there's another one. Um, this is what I did to DWM. As you can see, I even did it to DWM. Now this is my old DWM config, but you can see we got that readme.org file. And look, it just it displays and it works. And um, so you can see, I, I wrote a little bit about you know what each section's doing and everything. So um, I could have went in more detail, and I probably do need a, I need to do better documentation. I do, I know that, but uh, you know. And if we look at the config.def.h file, this is the actual config.def.h file. But if you if you looked at my readme, you don't see half of that stuff, right? Like, I mean, you see more, but it, it's 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 almost like a different different file. Um, but yeah, I mean, org mode in Emacs is probably hands down one of the best features in uh emacs i mean it is tremendous you can write all your custom configuration stuff and all your documentation all in just one file and um it saves you a lot of time um if you use it properly and not only that but you can uh, like i said you can do so much you can have you can have charts you can have i think you can even put timestamps like you can do all kinds of crazy stuff in org mode besides writing to a custom um 
configuration file. So, with all that being said, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. I do appreciate every single one of you that have subscribed already. Um, it means it's it's really awesome to see the channel taking off. And um, if you guys have any questions or comments, you know what to do. Feel free to leave them down below. And until next time, you guys, take care, be safe, and peace. Bye, guys.